Hello YouTube. Today what I would like to explain to you is NPN transistors or NPN switches or sensors. Electricians that I talk to or engineers, they don't understand the basic principles of what an NPN switch or sensor is doing. So I'm here today to explain that to you. Let's start with an NPN transistor. I'm going to have a video later on on PNP, but just to keep things square, we'll start with the NPN. The NPN transistor, I, from now on, I want you to think of it as a sinking transistor. Take that word NPN and correlate it with sinking. It's a better way for a normal person to remember this. What it does is it sinks current. First thing that we have to understand is that we're talking conventional current flow. In conventional current flow, charge flows from positive to negative or from a higher voltage potential to a lower voltage potential. So all drawings are represented as positive to negative. As you can see on this emitter of this NPN transistor, it points, the arrow points in the direction of conventional current flow. So since an NPN transistor is a sinking transistor, what it means is that we have to source it with some kind of charge. When we source the NPN transistor, it sinks it. Same thing on the load side of the transistor. We source our load and the NPN transistor sinks it. So if you can get in your head that an NPN transistor sinks, you'll always remember what it's doing. It helps you understand the inputs and the outputs. On the input of this circuit, on this NPN circuit, what we have to do is we provide the source, source and sink they work with one another. In order to utilize an NPN transistor or to activate the NPN transistor, we have to source it. So we source it with a positive voltage potential in comparison to this point right here, which is called the emitter. When we source it with a positive voltage potential in comparison with a more negative voltage potential, it activates. So since this drawing, which is a standard open collector drawing of a, of a transistor, we have what we call here the emitter point. When we source it with voltage on the base, I'm gonna draw that here so you can understand better the points here. This is the base, emitter, and collector. So when we source with a positive voltage right here and the NPN transistor sinks it, it activates, it turns on. What it actually does is it connects, in a sense you can think, a wire between the collector and the emitter. And if you see what that did to our load, it essentially turned our load on. So the negative point is here now because this is connected. Our common is our negative right here. And the positive is another source, a voltage source. So the voltage in conventional current flow, the current would flow from this more positive point to the negative point. It would turn on our load. So if you can think about it as I've drawn here, to activate an NPN transistor, we need to source it. In modern industry, 24 volts is pretty standard. So we source it with 24 volts. We have to have a base resistor, but I'm going to get into that in more detail in a more advanced video. But anyways, we source with 24 volts. It activates the transistor. When the transistor becomes active, because it connects these two points internal to the transistor, what it does is it supplies zero volts on our collector. So our collector... Now the active state of the transistor is zero volts. When it's inactive, you have to um, realize that it is a floating point now. It's not necessarily, um, depending upon your load, if there's a low resistive load here, that collector point would float up to the upper potential, but you don't know what load it's gonna be. So essentially, the inactive state of this transistor is floating. That's another important point for an electrician to know. When we activate an NPN sensor, its output is zero volts. Its inactive state, it floats. Sometimes when you look at these devices also, they have a complementary option. The complementary is exactly the opposite. It floats when the transistor is active, and it switches to zero volts when the transistor is inactive. So what I'd like to do with this NPN uh, representation is actually give you a a more visual picture of what an electrician might experience um, for an NPN transistor right here. If I use a representation as if this is a relay and that is a contact, an open contact on the relay, um, 
let's imagine this. It's very similar to what an NPN does when it is in the switching mode. Um, what we do here is if you see, I have how this is connected. I have this as the base right here. I have this right here, this point as the collector, and this point right here as the emitter. If you can see, and you know how normal relays work, um, a relay has to have a positive on one side and a negative on another, a standard DC relay. Um, so as you can see, my negative is hooked up on this side of the relay. I have to source it. And as, if you remember what I said, make sure you keep that in your head, that an NPN um, transistor sinks. So I have to source it in order for it to sink. They must work together. So what happens is I source this with a positive voltage on my base. And when I do that, this relay turns on and this switch pulls in. This is a good representation to try and understand what an NPN switch is doing. So if I source this, this switch pulls in and you can see it turns my load on. What it actually essentially did was it supplied the negative pull so I could turn on my load because the load is already connected to the positive on the other side. If I don't source the base, well then the relay doesn't pull in, the switch stays pulled out and the load turns off because it's not a circuit right here. So what you can actually see, one thing to remember like I tried to state before was that the collector point of this, it's not going to 24 volts and switching back to zero volts. What it's actually doing is zero volts or floating zero volts or floating depending upon the state of this base so if you can always remember like i said just to reiterate the npn sinks what it does is if i source current it sinks it here and also on the load side it's sinking the load one other thing i'd like to note on here is if you're looking at a sensor like you got a schematic let's say you got an inductive proc sensor and you're trying to hook it up a lot of times they don't even draw this base in here a lot of times it's because there's a lot more circuitry going on. The only thing the real electrician cares about is the load side, because uh, let's imagine inductive procs. On the input side, it's working with magnetic resonance and you put a piece of metal in front of it or something. So the base side is, it, it, it's got its own internal circuitry. All we really care about is the load side. So if we want this NPN sensor, which is a sinking sensor, as you remember, um, to turn to turn when we turn it on let's say we it's an inductive prox for example we put a piece of metal in front of it it turns on what it does is it sinks the load or as i said before it sets this collector to the sinking state so it sets it to zero volts as you can see here come back for my next video and i'll explain the exact opposite of what a pnp sensor circuit or transistor is doing